telling a story about a young man who was so excited. He was very excited because he had won a ticket to the Super Bowl. And as the date approached, he got more excited. And as the day was there and he walked up to the stadium, he, he was more excited. And then he found a seat and well, his excitement abated a little bit because he discovered he had the worst seat in the stadium. Uh, I couldn't really see things well. It was way back there were people in the way. But, you know, it was the Super Bowl, so it was all right. And, and uh, as the game started, more, he began uh, standing in front of him to see if there were any empty seats further up that he might be able to sneak into. And he, he, he finally found one, and it was one right up front along the sidelines, and he couldn't believe it. So he went up uh, to the seat, and there was an elderly man sitting in the seat next to him, and he said to him, excuse me, is this seat taken? And, and the elderly man said, uh, no, it's not. And so the young man uh, said, well, I can't believe that. Who would pass up such an opportunity to sit here? And the elderly man said, well, you know what, that's, that wasn't going to be my wife's seat. We've been to every Super Bowl together since we've been married. But she passed away. And then the young man thought that was sad. He said, well, that's too bad. But he got thinking about it for a while. And, and he said, well, couldn't you find anyone, a friend, a family member, to come sit with you at this game? And the other man just said, no, they're all at the funeral. Oh. <laughs> a joke about devotion. Who's the going to be right? Boo. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. You know, this devotion, we have choices in our life. What we are going to be devoted to, who we are going to be devoted to. We started talking about it last week. Last week, was we started out on a series uh, to set side by side the first church in Jerusalem by ours and to see how we can grow looking at them. Uh, and as we looked at them, we saw that these were people who found the grace and freedom in Jesus Christ. And, and, and through Jesus Christ, they were able to get past the things that held them back. And they were able uh, to uh, just be there doing God's work. They were able to find that place where they did that. And we also saw that they got to that place because they were devoted to the right things. And they were devoted to two things. You remember what they were? They were devoted to the apostles' teaching, learning, going, hearing, studying how they can live their life for Jesus Christ better and more fully. And the second thing they were devoted to was the fellowship. The fellowship, the amassed body of believers in Jesus Christ. You know, as we can uh, continue in this series, I want to take a closer look at this necessity to be devoted to the fellowship of believers in Jesus Christ. Because uh, we saw people found freedom from it. And it wasn't just something that they did in the other church. Because oh, well, that's what their culture did. Well, cultures change. We don't have to worry about it. To the contrary, the scripture passage I will read in a few minutes points out correctly that we are not to give up meeting together. We are to continue to be devoted to the fellowship. And, and, and we see why. We are to continue. As we look more closely at today's passage, we will see that God does amazing things in His church body when we are devoted to one another. I have a story for you here. And still, the pastor, he just sat there with the man. And 
time passed. So eventually the pastor looked at his watch and realized, oh, it's time for him to be going. So he got up, didn't even bother with the toilet. Collins didn't have to. He picked up the cold ember and he placed it back into the fire gently, where immediately the other embers around it gave that ember life again. It began to glow again. And so as the pastor put on his coat, and the man he had stopped the visit showed him to the door with tears in his eyes. And he said, Pastor, thank you so much for the visit and the fiery sermon. I'll definitely be back at church next Sunday. And without a word, the pastor had shown him, he had made this point regarding the necessity of being in the fellowship where there is life and there is vibrancy. As we devote ourselves to the fellowship, we see what God does and we see how God sustains us in so many different ways. You know, uh, the scripture for today, the second scripture is taken from Hebrews chapter 10. And it tells us, it actually gives us right there a reason, the things that we uh, benefit from by being connected to the fellowship. Hebrews 10, 24 through 26, it says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. That is the scripture. And as I said, we see in there the center idea of those few verses is do not give up on meeting together in the fellowship. Don't give up on it. And we see several reasons in there for the writer saying that. The first one comes in verse 24. Before the writer even says, don't give up on meeting in the fellowship, he establishes a reason for it when he says, let us consider how we must spur one another on to love. Now, we are in the fellowship so that we can spur each other on to love. You know, let's be honest. Sometimes we get disconnected from God's love, don't we? And we don't really feel, we don't think we're experiencing it, although God's there the whole time, but we don't know how to get to it. And anyone here ever, ever feel like they just run love or God loves somebody else more than them when they were alone or isolated? We've all been there. And, and how about this? Anybody here ever need help loving others? Or am I the only one? And so there are just some people who are just, they seem downright unlovable, don't they? We all need to be spurred on to loving others because God created you to love Him and to love others. But how do we get there? We get there in the fellowship. I'll take you to Romans chapter 12 right now, in verses 9 and 11, where it says, Love must be sincere. And then Paul goes on to say, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Where is the context for the love? It's to one another. It's within the fellowship. And then he goes on to say that uh, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. You know, we find sincere love in the fellowship. And you know what, what happens when we fall away from the fellowship and we don't plug ourselves into it? Well, we lose our zeal, don't we? We lose our zeal for God because we're not there. There's no one there spurring us on to it because we are not part of the fellowship. But when we are devoted to one another, we spur one another on toward love. Love of God and love of others. And the grace and the love and the power of Jesus Christ is all that much more powerful in our lives as we come together as believers. But we must be devoted to one another in the fellowship. That's what it's got to be. You know, verse 25, it tells us more clearly when it says, let us not give up meeting together, but let us encourage one another. Another reason we have to be involved in a fellowship is to encourage one another. Let's face it, we all get to places in life where it's hard to go on, right? Uh, uh, life gets us down. We don't know what's coming next, and we don't even know why or how we should do what should be coming up next, right? And those times, we need encouragement. And we get that encouragement within the fellowship when we're plugged into it, when we can share our doubts our hurts, our worries with people. You know, we know the people who will be praying for us. We know the people who will share an encouraging word with us. But we don't know them if we're not devoted to the fellowship. We can't even know them. We miss the blessing of encouragement when we are not plugged into the fellowship. It is in being devoted that we become part 
of the fellowship. We become part of what's going on in the fellowship. A familiar passage to many of you in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26 and 27, Paul writes about this. And he says, if one part of the body suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. But he talks about being the body of Christ, being within the fellowship, and guess what? You're plugged into that body of Christ, you're having a bad time, you're suffering, and everyone's suffering with you. Because they know your struggles, your trials. You're not alone there. If you are honored, everyone rejoices with you. Think of how many things over the years we've rejoiced in together uh, when somebody has experienced something great. You know, you're part of the body of Christ. You're part of that fellowship. Even when you feel like you're helpless, he's like, I can't contribute a whole lot. I can't do a whole lot. It's just me. And God says, yes, that's right. Because you are not the whole. You're not supposed to be doing it all yourself. You are part of the fellowship. And you might say, I can't contribute a whole lot. I, don't, I can't really do a whole lot. What I do doesn't seem very important. Uh, but it's part of the whole. You don't have to do something great. You have to contribute your part, and then all the parts work together to do something great as the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not just you. That's the encouraging thing. Not that you've got to do it by yourself, but everyone's going to do it together as God's church. <clears throat> you know, I think uh, of my back when, when I think about this, because many of you know that since we moved my brother-in-law's parents back to this area at the beginning of May, my back's been going out, and there are times I just go to stand up, and I like, oh, start screaming because David saw it, and he said, is he serious? Uh, yeah, because I just, it just, there's no warning, it just, it's there, and I can't move, I, uh, I can only be in pain for a moment until I work past it. Uh, and so, I, I, I treat my back, too, and I'll walk like this, and I'll support my back with my hand, and I'll maybe uh, put more weight on my other leg, and, and you know what, the back is a little bit weak right now, but the rest of the body parts... You know, uh, do the work. That's my encouragement. I can still do what I need to do because the other body parts are supporting me. That's what we get in the fellowship of the believers. When we are weak, when we suffer, we get the encouragement of people being there to support us. You know, verse 26 of Hebrews chapter 10 gives us a third reason, a third benefit to being in the fellowship. And, and it is, we meet together to hold each other accountable from sin. You take a look at verse 26, it says, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. The writer starts talking about, hey, don't keep on sinning. And he does it in the next breath right after saying, don't give up on the fellowship. The juxtaposition of putting up these two things side by side seems to indicate that the writer finds some benefit within the fellowship that helps us to keep from sinning over and over and over again. Uh, we need to fellowship to keep on God's course, to keep on the wise course, to hold one another accountable. You know, in, in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, it says, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. You know, there are a lot of people who claim to follow Jesus Christ, and they might follow Jesus Christ, who, who, who don't really spend a whole lot of time with the wives. You know, they say, I'll go to church uh, two or three times a month, but I'm not really going to do a whole lot more with that. I'm, I'm going to spend my time with people outside of the church. And let, let me make it straight. We in the church have to spend time with people outside of the church. Otherwise, how would they see and know the love and light of Jesus Christ? But when we spend time with them, we need to recognize that they are fools. And, and I, I don't mean that lightly, but they're fools because they have rejected the wisdom of God in their lives. They walk away from God. And you know what? As fools, if that's all you're spending all your time and energy with, uh, they are going to cause you harm because they are going to draw you away from God. They don't understand why, why you come to church or why you do things with your church family uh, because they don't understand God's wisdom. And so they're going to pull you away from God. They're going to drag you into their sin unless... You are devoted to the fellowship. The people who are given the wisdom of God by His Holy Spirit when we follow Jesus Christ. People who will help us grow wise. People who will keep us on God's plan. Keep people who will hold us accountable. 
from sin. You know, it's just we add all these things up and we see that the fellowship, one another, spending time with one another, it's just another gift God gives us to experience His grace. Raise your hand if you have never ever needed help connecting to God's love in your life. If you've never needed an encouraging word from a godly person who speaks with the compassion of the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand if you're perfect and you never needed a godly friend to pull you out of the things of this world when you were drifting from God. Those are all things we get from the fellowship. All the more as we become more devoted to the fellowship. You know, if you're going to do your life for Jesus Christ and you're going to grow in His grace, then you need the fellowship. You know what? And you need to get into it on a regular basis, and you need to get into it, into the fellowship, in an intimate basis. You know, we come together here in a large group, in a big room, and it's wonderful. We can't neglect this, because this is part of how we worship God every day, or every week here. But you know what? There's something more to go deeper. You need something more intimate, because we read in Acts chapter 2, how the people continue to break bread, where? In their homes. And in Acts chapter 20, verse 20, Paul says he continued to teach the people from house to house. It wasn't just this large group, but it was groups of people in smaller groups meeting together to be devoted to one another in fellowship. And, you know, we start with a large group, but we've got to go to the smaller group. I, I want to urge you, if you're not already involved, you need to get involved in some sort of small group ministry at this church. Uh, and I don't just mean our home-based small groups. We have those groups of people who meet in homes. And if there are lots of people who want to be committed to those, we can start more. But there's more than that. There's Sunday school. Uh, the people who come to Sunday school here will tell you, hey, I know uh, so much about the people's struggles, about their lives, about how I can help them and encourage them from meeting with them in Sunday school. They'll tell you that because it's a more intimate group of people. You know, we have that. We have Wednesday evening Bible study. You know, a perfect place to have a small group of people get together and study God's Word and work through it. You know, but uh, if you're part of the, the, the younger adults, we have our Sunday evening adult fellowship here uh, twice a, a month that you can become part of. Or you can become part of a ministry group. You know, the Board of Christian Ed always looking for people to help with kids' time. Our mission circle, uh, they, uh, yeah, again, they have lots of ideas. And now they need people to join them who can take those ideas and really put them in practice to do those ideas as part of the fellowship. And you will experience, when you do that, you will experience love and encouragement and accountability. You know, in a world where 36% of people say that they feel alone, we come back to this idea that God says, you were never meant to do the Christian life alone. It was never supposed to be that way. God gives us His Holy Spirit to be our counselor, to be our comforter. All the time we walk with God, and He also gives us the fellowship to spur us on to love, to encourage us, and to keep us out of sin. That's the fellowship. I, I want to close today by asking you to think about a fish, a saltwater fish, swimming in the ocean amidst the school of many other fish. Have you ever seen these images videos of this on some nature show where they're swimming and they are vibrant and the fish swim and they look happy and they're living well. What if we take one of those fish and just take it right out of that to the ocean and we bring it home and we throw it down in our backyard and maybe every minute or so one of us comes by and we throw a bucket of water on it and someone follows that person just takes a salt shaker and dumps some salt in that fish. That fish isn't going to be uh, healthy very long. It's going to struggle for a while. It's probably eventually going to die like that. But you know, that's what we are. We're like those dying fish in the backyard. When we say, oh, I'm going to uh, uh, come to church maybe uh, a few times a month. That's all the more of the fellowship I'm going to plug into. We're all like a fish coming and, you know, we come to worship and we get the water dumped on us. But, you know, when we plug into the fellowship, we're like that thriving fish. Still in the ocean amidst the school of fish, healthy. When we are there within the fellowship seeking God. Today, don't be that fish laying almost dead in our backyards. Don't try to do the Christian life alone, but become involved 
with your fellow believers in Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Find love, find encouragement, find accountability, but don't do it alone because you won't 